Um, I don't think we were thinking about 1776 as the Christian summer uh, in any way whatsoever. And so I, I have problems with the notion of the Arab Spring. It lumps too much together into one label, conveniently, uh, for uh, bourgeois journalists. Uh, but since that language is out there, I think it, you know what, what, what I'm talking about. It began, of course, in Tunisia in December of last year, uh, when a maligned uh, vendor ended up uh, burning himself, setting himself on fire to protest against repression. And from that single episode, uh, it spread throughout all of North Africa and Southwest Asia. Uh, virtually without exception. Uh, and that's the uprising that we've seen emerge really since January of this year. Uh, beginning of course after Tunisia uh, in Egypt and spreading uh, around. The point about the Arab Spring was that what it finally did was to show us that on the one hand change even in what we thought of as the most entrenched bureaucratic and authoritarian regimes suddenly looked possible. And it became an inspiration for movements all around the world. Now it's very clear that the Arab Spring, as it unfolds, it's only just begun, that as the revolutions unfold and the revolts and the uprisings unfold, they're going to take very different paths and in all likelihood have very different endpoints, uh, whether we're contrasting Tunisia with Egypt or Libya with Syria. Uh, and, and, and so on. It's going to be a very uneven process. But it's an absolutely fascinating political process, both to watch, but also to be involved in. And I, I say that uh, not at all flippantly, because the argument that I want to make is that a lot of the kinds of movements that I think many of us have begun to get involved in with the Occupy movement are themselves uh, generically connected to the movements that were happening earlier this year, uh, uh, whether in uh, Tahrir Square, uh, or in Tunisia, or uh, in, in uh, more recently in Libya, and still ongoing, obviously, in Syria. But in addition to what's called the Arab Spring, we have to second throw in, I think, the anti-austerity <coughs> movements in Europe, and the rise of the indignatos in Spain in particular, but uh, sympathetic movements around what we can think of as the indignatos uh, in, in, in other countries. Literally, um, every country in Western Europe has seen extraordinary <coughs> revolts of one sort or another against the kinds of austerity that have been put into place really since 2008. Forms of austerity that of course have built on a much longer history of what we can think of as the neoliberal moment of capitalism and I'll, I'll come back to that. But third, in this country, uh, in January, February, what we saw was also the beginnings of a revolt which was curtailed, but a revolt nonetheless in Wisconsin, uh, which again inspired a lot of people, uh, even though the conclusion of it was at best, the most optimistic I think you can be, is that it was a mixed success. Uh, there were considerable failures too, but the... Uh, um, uh, various movements to recall some of the politicians from Wisconsin uh, and also now in other states has gathered steam since then. So I don't want to write off Wisconsin as a total uh, loss. On top of that then obviously the Occupy Wall Street movement uh, that's now almost two months old uh, which built and has become in many ways global. We can throw in too the movements in Chile uh, around especially education and anti-austerity uh, uh, politics, uh, led very much by the Communist Party in, in, in Chile. It involves a, a real polyglot uh, uh, kind of politics, but uh, with the Communist Party central to it. Now, I'm fastening on 2011 because it seems to me that to the extent that those movements have come together, this really was the year in which that's begun to happen. And I think that that's going to go down historically as, uh, a, and this is going to go down as a crucial year. Of course, in every uh, one of these cases, there have been precursors to all of those movements. There have been revolts in the so-called Arab world in the past. 
um, and, and, and that history is just too long and too complex to go through. Um, some of the very regimes that were toppled, the Mubarak regime in Egypt, of course, itself came from a prior revolt gone bad, if you will, uh, under some of the, the later uh, uh, leaders of the Egyptian state. The European anti-austerity measures really began to kick in on the heels of various other kinds of revolts, the Ban Luz in Paris, for example, in 2005, but other anti-austerity revolts that were going on by 2007, 2008. Wisconsin, uh, after a long period of quiescence in the American labor movement, did in fact build on the power and strength of especially public service workers' unions in this country. Occupy Wall Street pulled together fragments of different kinds of movements that had been in existence for a long time uh, and pulled them together into something that we would now recognize as the occupation movement. So I don't want to suggest that history just started anew in 2011. That would be false. However, I do think it's important to see 2011 as this uh, uh, crucial moment where things change. And what's changed in particular in the most, in the broadest sense, is precisely that the future again now seems open. In a way, I think that in 2005 or even 2007, it was very difficult, at least for those of us in North America and certainly in Europe, it was very difficult to see that future as again open.